Today I will give you my technical analysis on the top 5 gainers and the top 5 losers of yesterday, Monday, February 18, 2019. You will know and you will hear my overall sentiment for each of these stocks. So I'm going to tell you first what are these top 5 gainers and the top 5 losers from yesterday's trading. So for the top 5 gainers, I'll be talking about JGS, SMC, FB, Wilkin, and finally VMC. And of course, we have the top 5 losers list. We have ISM, FNI, ZHI, MB, and lastly, T. So let's start it off with JGS. Okay, so let's talk. Let's uh, check the stock, the the chart of JGS. JGS uh, resistance is pegged at 67.13 or 67.10, while the uh, support is at 51.21. But there's a midterm support seated at 60.32. How likely is a JGS? Uh, uh, how likely is it for us to see JGS moving above 67.13? Um, there's a high, there's a probability, an extra high probability for JGS to pierce through the immediate resistance at 67.13 because yesterday's trading was supported with a towering volume. However, we we prefer to see uh, another, you know, similar, uh, if not equal. If not equal, it should be a bigger volume for today, so that uh, there's enough support from the, you know, from the bullish momentum for this resistance to be broken, broken out. Because if today, if JGS will register a slim or a flimsy volume, then it might weaken the strong appetite of yesterday's traders to buy above 67.13. In other words, for us. Uh, to increase the likelihood of breaking out above 67.13, we prefer to see a towering volume for today. Okay, otherwise it will it might just bounce away from 67.13 and uh, retest the midterm support at 60.32. Foreign investors yesterday registered uh, a 72 about 73 million net foreign selling. MACD, MACD, I'm seeing. Uh, uh, a slight uh, change in direction in here from moving to the uh, southeast direction it's now it seems like it's now moving to the northeast dire direction so we would want to see uh, this uptrend to be to, to be sustained to also increase the likelihood of MACD uh, you know to, to cross above the signal line now as far as historical volatility is concerned uh, JGS maintained its moderate risk level since its historical volatility is positioned at 58.61%. So there you go. So I am bullish on JGS and I, we do we prefer to see a bigger volume if not an, a volume equal um, equal to yesterday's volume for this uh, ascent to be for us to see a continuity on this ascent in price. Okay? So that's for JGS. Now let's move on to SMC. For SMC, uh, yesterday's movement was also supported by a significant volume, um, followed by support coming from the foreign investors net foreign buying amounted to 100, 108 million pesos. And be alert on this one, by the way. Yesterday's price moved above the 10 SMA, and MACD is now above to move about to move above about to cross the signal line. Okay, take note. If these two things happen within the same day, you can consider that as a buy signal. What are those two things that should happen within the same day? Okay, same day. The, the price should move above the 10 SMA and MACD should cross above the signal line. So something's being cooked in here. A buy signal is about to come out. Uh, come, uh, come out. But if you would like to preempt, then it's okay to preempt the confirmed buy signal but uh, for newbie traders I would suggest that you wait for the confirmed buy signals to to come out so do not preempt yet L leave those uh, preempt preempting uh, moves to the experienced ones now risk level wise I can say that SMC has uh, maintains its low risk uh, low risk level since it's, it has a volatility score of 44.30 percent so there you go 
uh, immediate support sits at 165 pesos um, the major support is of course at 142.15 followed by 155 and the midterm support sits at 165 as I mentioned a while back the resistance is situated near 179 pesos so just like a JGS we prefer to see a continu continuity on it's a significant volume today to increase the likelihood of it inching closer to the next resistance at 179 pesos. Otherwise, if it will just register a flimsy volume, it might just bounce away from 179 and uh, retest 165 if not 155. I, on the other hand, I also like the uh, alignment of our moving averages in here. The shorter term ones are already moving above the longer term ones. So. I'm uh, bullish on SMC both on a short-term and long-term perspective. Despite that bullishness, please be on top of your trailing stop loss. Okay, so let's move on to the third top five, third third top gainer of yesterday's trading. We have FB, San Miguel Food and Be Beverage. Yesterday's ascent was also, was also supported with volume. Uh, nonetheless, we didn't get much. SMC did not, or FB did not get much support from the net from the foreign investors since uh, they just registered uh, a negative, a net foreign selling amounting to less than 200,000 pesos. Very insignificant. Okay, so foreign investors participation has no bearing in this case. Um, as far as yesterday's trading, okay, uh, resistance is pegged at 103 pesos, while the support is at 90 90.71. 90.70 centavos, 90, centav 90 pesos and 70 centavos. Uh, nonetheless, FB's price is also moving above the 10 SMA. Although MACD is still uh, below the signal line, but it's also already poised. You know, it seems to be wanting to cross above the signal line already, but that's not yet a confirmed buy signal if you're looking for confirmations. Okay, so... For those who already have a position on on FB, I would suggest well, the rule of thumb, be on top of your trailing stop loss, especially if you entered a new position sometime in December last year. But if you're just uh, if you are only if you're just planning to enter a new position today, I would suggest uh, you observe what's going to happen in the first 15 to 30 minutes of trading if there's a strong demand to buy above uh, above 90, 98.60 if there's a strong demand you can do a test buy and hopefully uh, the, the strong upward momentum will be will uh, 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 will, will gain a further support uh, from those who would like to buy the stock up okay so let's take a look at uh, so let's take a look at the, the, the fourth top gainer so we have Wilkin. Okay, so for Wilkin, resistance is already at 14.90 and the support is at 12.95. So we would like to see, we would like, we would want to know what's, what's ahead of 14.90. What's, what's behind 14.90? What's the next psychological resistance? So I've used Fibonacci in here to get the extended Fibonacci uh, uh, to get the extension at 60 to get the Fibonacci extension at 61.98% or 61.8% rather. So here you go. So the immediate support, the immediate resi the next resistance, psychological resistance, okay? Not historical, but psychological resistance is at 17.95 okay you can round it up to 18 pesos okay so that's where the next uh, psychological resistance is so it's at 18 pesos uh, am i see am, am i saying that Wilkin will surely hit 18 pesos no we're just trying to forecast uh it's a uh, next next uh, psychological resistance which is pegged at 18 pesos there's still a chance as you can see here there's it seemed to me that it there was a struggle there was a struggle last week to break out above 14.90 you can see these two attempts here 
last uh, February 12 and 13, they they made some attempts to break out above 14.90 to no avail. And then they did that yesterday as well. But let's see what's the intraday high yesterday. Yesterday's intraday high was 14.96. Okay, 14.96. So there you go. It uh, We prefer to see... Uh, um, an equally significant volume, if not higher than yesterday's volume, for this, uh, for the bulls to have a stronger force to break out these, uh, to break this uh, fence that's preventing them to move higher than 15 pesos or 14.90. MACD is already moving; it's about to cross above the signal line once again. And as far as risk level is concerned, Wilcon has a low risk level. It's a low risk stock. Okay. So, am I bearish or bullish on Wilkin? I am bullish on Wilkin. If you already have, if you have had a position in Wilkin, the evergreen advice is to be on top of your trailing stop loss. It's always the same advice that I give to those who already have a position on any stock. Be on top of your trailing stop loss. Be cautious, conscious of your trailing stop loss. And for those who don't have a position on Wilcon yet, especially for the new traders, I would suggest don't even don't even buy yet near 14.90. Wait for some pullbacks, for some short-term pullbacks, maybe somewhere 14 pesos if that happens. Okay. Now, if it breaks out above 14.90 and you see a strong demand. Then it's okay to do a test buy above 14.90. But for again for new new traders, I don't suggest entering a new position near 15 pesos, unless this is a conditional clause, unless unless you see a strong demand on the bid ask spread uh, for for the price to uh, to go up. Okay. Okay. Finally, finally in the list of top gainers, we have uh, VMC. Okay, now for VMC, the major support is at 2.32, major resistance is at 3.40, with the midterm support seated at 2.80. Yesterday's movement was supported with a strong volume. Uh, yesterday's volume um, managed to continue to move above its 10-day uh, volume average. MACD is obviously bullish, and there seems to be there. There is now a, there is now a crossover between my 10 SMA and 200 day SMA okay so nonetheless even though VMC is bullish on a short term basis it's not yet completely bullish on a long term perspective how did I say so because the, this 200 day SMA is still moving above the 50 day SMA the alignment that we prefer to see is the 20 SMA above the 50 SMA and 50 SMA above the 200 day SMA so it should be green yellow blue not blue, green, yellow, okay? Or not green, blue, yellow. It should be green, yellow, blue. That should be the alignment of these moving averages. For us to say that a particular stock is moving not only in a, cert, in a, in a bullish short-term perspective, but also in a long-term uh, perspective. Uh, we, we can derive much from the from the foreign investors participation because they just registered a measly amount of uh, 37,000 pesos worth of net foreign selling yesterday Okay, so my overall sentiment is bullish on VMC Okay, and it has a risk level. That's uh, it's already a high risk because it's already moving above 70% uh, historical volatility again VMC is a high risk stock if you are a relatively new trader, new short-term trader, stick with low to moderate risk stocks. For now, for now, okay. A day will come that you will be experienced enough, disciplined enough, and uh, you know, informed enough, knowledgeable enough to trade high to extremely high risk stocks. But for now, stick with low, low to moderate risk stocks. Those are stocks with uh, with the volatility score below seventy percent, and preferably preferably below fifty per fifty percent. Okay. Uh, I'm bullish on VMC. Uh, for those who have a position, you know you know the drill. 
be on top of your trailing stop loss. For those who don't have a position yet and are high risk uh, um, stock traders, if you have a high risk risk profile, if you have a high risk profile and you have the experience and, and knowledge already on what you're doing, and if you have the time to monitor the by the second movement of uh, prices, uh, you have the option to do a test buy if um, you see a strong demand to buy the stock up. Okay, where do you see the strong demand? How, where do you see that? It's on the bid ask spread. Okay, it's on the bid ask spread or on the full market depth. I recorded a video, a taglish video about the full market depth. So take a look at take a look at that video on the videos tab on your account, on your dashboard at Equilist Analytics. Okay, not on your broker's platform. Uh, you will not see the video there. Okay, so. I'm bullish, do a test buy if you see a strong demand to buy the stock up right onto the momentum within the first 15 to 30 minutes of trading. Uh, but if you see uh, if you see that there's a topsy-turvy start for VMC, I would say you stay on the sidelines and continue monitoring the stock. Uh, this uh, this stock, especially that yesterday it, it made uh, an outrageous and ambitious attempt to, uh, to register a price uh, above 4.0. Or at four pesos per share, but it uh, retracted. It withdrew that attempt, and settled at two point. It settled at three point zero instead. Okay. All right. So that's it for the top five gainers for yesterday's trading. So you've heard my sentiment for each of those stocks, namely JGS, SMC, FB, Wilkin, and finally VMC. Oh, by the way, for VMC. Um, to take a look at its weekly chart I made some notes in here to check on the uh, weekly chart it's because it's a lot easier to check on the weekly chart it's a lot easier to check the overall picture of VMC uh, by by con by converting the chart from daily to weekly so th that's how I converted it so one day one week one month so I click on one week and that's how I got these support and resistance levels by the way I transition from from the daily to weekly chart when do I do that? When do I transition from daily to weekly or from daily to monthly? I do that when it's kind of hard to find the historical support and resistance of the stock without having to uh, without having to zoom it out uh, some years ago. Uh, uh, some years ago. So, for example, in this case, I don't want to scroll to the left this far just to get the historical uh, uh, historical uh, uh, support and resistance of the stock so when I notice that I have to I am already scrolling too far to the left when when I notice that I, I adjust the transition from one day to one week and if, tra if the transition from the weekly chart is not enough if let's say if I'm already on the weekly chart and I still have to go, uh, scroll to the left much then I will uh, change it again from one week to one month until I see a compressed picture of the of the chart okay all right so I, I had to explain that because for sure some would ask when do you settle with the daily chart when do you use the weekly chart when do you use the monthly chart but that's just my simple explanation when I don't want to scroll that much to the left I compress the picture to one week to the weekly chart if the weekly chart is still uh, needs me to scroll so much to the left then I go to the one mo monthly chart okay now let's move on to the top five losers for the top five losers we have ISM, FNI, ZHI, MB and finally T okay so let's take a look at ISM okay for ISM I I would say that there's a likelihood for likelihood for ISM to just continue trading the range between 5.20 and 6.80. Uh, how did I say that? There's a topsy turvy or a volume that has been being registered on a daily basis since since uh, the beginning of February 2019. So actually, that has been the behavior of ISM since uh, November since since the last week of November last year. It has just been moving within this range. 5.20 to 6.80 6 
So unless and until we see uh, we see an uh, a breakout on volume, just like what happened sometime in the first few weeks of November, there was a breakout on volume, and that was the day when uh, it went above this uh, 6.80 range or 6.80 uh, midterm resistance. Okay, so let's wait and see. Let's wait for a breakout on volume uh, for it to. Uh, go out of this range so for for now i am neutral on ism i, I still see a um i still see some likelihood of it continuing to you know move within this uh, range it's besides it's still moving below the 10 sma and mac is also below the signal line okay that's uh that's not the buy signal that, that we're looking for and in addition to that um, ism is also a uh, a high risk stock already because it's it has a historical volatility above 70% already okay foreign investors their participation is relatively insignificant they only registered 4 million worth of net foreign buying yesterday so there you go i'm neutral to bearish neutral to bearish on ism but nonetheless if you have a position on ism aside from being on top of your trailing stop loss I would suggest you monitor this stock, especially if you are really committed into short-term trading. You know, my neutral to bearish sentiment might change. My, it's subject to change when there's a breakout on volume. We will never know when it will show a breakout on volume. It could be today, tomorrow, Friday, next week, next month. Okay. So again, don't don't call yourself or don't uh, don't enter uh, uh, don't, don't enter the the game uh, of an active trader if you don't have the number one the time the time to monitor okay here in the Philippines we don't have a, a stop loss feature yet none of the brokers have that feature yet in place that's why the demand to have the time to monitor the by the second movement of prices is so high okay you have the, to have the time to monitor the stocks uh, from night, from the opening to, until closing. Okay. So let's move on to the next stock. So we have FNI. So for FNI, yesterday's uh, bearish price was supported with a bearish volume. That's not the kind of support that we need. Um, because of this towering volume yesterday and, and the red candlestick yesterday, Yesterday's volume was way above its 10-day volume average. For me, this shows that there could be a continuity of the bearish price movement of FNI because of this. Okay, it's a bearish it's a bearish uh, uh, candlestick with a strong appetite to sell the stock down. So the probably those people who who uh, sold their position significantly yesterday were the ones who bought at a higher price and they decided oops this is the chance for us to get out with the with the not with the gain but perhaps with a, a little um a lesser loss a lesser loss from our from 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 our losses since the day we entered at a price higher than maybe what, higher than 1.76 so they took that as an opportunity to sell um at a lesser loss at a lesser loss perhaps or maybe those who enter the position above uh, let's uh, below below uh, let's say below 1.4 below 1.50 perhaps um, they translated yesterday's intraday high of 1.68 as a selling signal but I doubt it if you are following my 10 SMA and MACD combination then for sure you did not there, there was no there was no uh, clear buy signals that came out between uh, February 7 and February 13 okay all right so I am bearish on FNI okay I am bearish on FNI if I were if I were you I would monitor this stock and wait for it to draw closer to 1.39 okay how did I get 1.39 it's quite far it's quite far um, going to the left again 
So in this particular case, what do I do? I mentioned I mentioned to you a while back. What do I do if I have to scroll all the way to the left just to, just to find the cycle the historical support and resistance of a stock? So I transition from daily to weekly chart. Okay, so that's how I got the uh, psychological uh, historical rather support at 1.39. I transition to the weekly chart, so I don't have to scroll that much to the left. Okay, see that? Saves me time from scrolling, huh? <laughs> okay, so for MACD, it remains uh, above the signal line, and the price is although the price is still moving above the 10 day simple moving average, this is not the right time to trade FNI. Well, at least for me, as far as my interpretation and time horizon is concerned. Well, besides, FNI is also, also have it's already a high risk stock. And it's, it's about to register uh, a, a historical volatility above 100%. It's just, it's just about six points away from entering the extremely high risk level. So newbie investors or newbie traders, pick another stock as your candidate for short-term trading. Not FNI for now. Not now. Not now. Okay. So let's move on to the third top loser from yesterday's trading so we have Z so Z is um, trying to maintain its position trying to stay afloat above uh, uh, 0 0.34 which is the 50% uh, in confluence with 50% Fibonacci retracement okay so it's trying to say stay afloat above 0 0.34 but uh, unfortunately um, it did not it, it did not manage to continue its position above the 10 day SMA yesterday and yesterday as well uh, MACD crossed below uh oh that's not <laughs> that's not the crossover that we that we like that we need to see uh, if we're if we are expecting a buy signal so it already crossed below uh, the signal line that's a death cross we prefer a golden cross not a death cross okay so I'm bearish. It's a top loser yesterday, and, it, and I, ma I maintain my bearish position or sentiment on Z. Okay, so there's still a chance for Z to, you know, just uh, come back and forth on this level at 0 0.34 because yesterday's uh, descent uh, did not come with uh, a towering volume, meaning to say uh, there were there are still some hopefuls hopefuls of Z. Uh, that are still that might still be holding a significant portion on this stock. So it's either it will bounce away from 0 0.34, but once they realize that it's not worth uh, uh, holding Z shares, perhaps they, you know, uh, this stock might start to descend below 0 0.34 and check and retest the the the, uh, the next support at 0 0.31 or 0 0.32, which is by the way in confluence with 61. 8% Fibonacci retracement. Uh, if you have been reading about Fibonacci, there, there's a classical belief wherein, whereby some traders say, some traders say that the, the uh, um, this golden ratio, 61.8%, is uh, there's a probability for the stock to bounce up, to bounce away once it is hit. So let's see, let's see, let's see if history repeats itself. Or let's see if that classical belief is true this time. So when Z um, continues its downtrend towards 61.8% Fibonacci retracement, which is at 0 0.32 or 0 0.31, let's see if it will bounce away from there and continue to. Uh, and, and let's see if it will reverse its uh, movement once it draws once it draws closer to 0 0.31. For now, I maintain my bearish sentiment on Z. So let's take a look at MB. Okay, for MB, it has been descending for the past four days. So there's a chance for MB to respect the support at 0 0.60. Um, how did I arrive to that sentiment? It's because despite this uh, descent in price, 
there, there are no towering volume bars registered in the past three trading days meaning to say for me okay for me those who bought uh, last February 13 February 12 February 12 and 13 they did not release much of their shares they did not vomit that much of those shares that they bought during those two days they did not they have not vomited yet they have not sold much of those shares because if they did then we should be seeing some equally high uh, uh, some some uh, volume bars that are of equal size to the to these two bars registered last February 12 and 13. So for me, they're still holding a significant portion of what they bought last February 12 and 13. So that so that's why I arrived into the decision, not decision. I arrived into the sentiment that there's a chance for MB to just uh, to 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 make some attempts to respect the support 0.60. Nonetheless, things change when sentiments change. Sentiments change rather when, when things change. Uh, let's see. It's now about to cross the median, the median between 0 0.9 and 0 0.6. Okay? And uh, continue monitoring the stock near this level, 0 0.6. If you see that there's there, if you see that there, there are some significant buyers wanting to buy at 0 0.60. Perhaps you can consider doing a test buy. Doing a test buy. Uh, when I say you can consider doing a test buy, the pronoun you that I'm referring to are the experienced traders. Okay. Uh, for the relatively new traders, new short-term traders, uh, pick another stock to trade. MB has an outrage. MB has is an extremely high risk stock because it has a 346% historical volatility score already courtesy of its uh, giant leap last February 11 okay this one so it now has a historical volatility of 346% and that's an extremely high risk stock okay if you have the position on MB, let's say you enter the position somewhere within this uh, level between perhaps between uh, uh, 0 0.32 to 0 0.38. If you manage to enter MB between that range, 0 0.32 to 0 0.38 or 0 0.40, then my my advice to you is that you should be on, respect your trailing stop loss. There's no better advice than that. Now, if you are, if you don't have MB and you are inclined into thinking, oh, maybe I can trade this stock. Well, consider those things that I mentioned to you. First, this is a, this is an extremely, this stock has an extremely high risk level. And there's a probability for it to continue its downtrend all the way to 6, 0 0.60. Okay, 0 0.60. The the probability that I mentioned uh, a while back. What was the probability again? It might just respect the support at 0 0.60. Still, that's a con that's a conditional clause. It doesn't mean it will surely rebound. It does not mean that it will surely rebound from 0 0.60 when it hits this level. It can still continue its downtrend. Remember, if I, I do hope you watch the video that I uploaded last week, how to plot support and resistance level. I mentioned there the two probabilities when a stock grows closer to its resistance or support level. First, it's either it will bounce away from that area or it will con it will continue its trend, whether downtrend or uptrend. Okay? For now, I'm bearish on MB. Okay? Okay, finally, let's have T. This is the last in our list of top losers from yesterday's trading. Even though uh, T registered a green candlestick and it's above the 10 SMA. It's still our combination, our 10 SMA MACD combo, uh, failed to give us a confirmed buy signal. Why? Because when the price moved back above the 10 SMA yesterday, MACD was already moving above the signal line. So we want two things to happen within, this, within the exact same day. The price moving above the 10 SMA and the MACD crossing the MACD crossing above the um, the signal line. So, well, yesterday, MACD 
has already been crossing above the signal has already been moving above the signal line uh, since since when since uh, the beginning of February this year so it did not just it did not just cross above the signal line yesterday it has already been moving above the signal line since the beginning of February okay we want to see a fresh breakout that's what I'm trying to say a fresh break breakout from uh, the signal line and from and the price above the 10 SMA that's how I get my buy signal using this these uh, this this combination okay now uh, yesterday's price was uh, in the red um, still volume was volume was quite low yesterday okay so there's still a chance for uh, PKC to continue it's to just you know trade this range between 1.30 and 1 okay um, but still I'm, I'm bearish on TKC I'm bearish on TKC um, I don't see uh, I don't see some evidences I don't see some evidence of uh, a strong demand coming from traders for T uh, especially if we are to, if we are to remove the picture last uh, February 12 um, this was not an organic what happened last February 12 was not an organic uh, ascent in price since it was uh, it was not an organic ascent in price it was not fundamentally backed up uh, it was just caused by it was just driven by sentiment okay it did not manage to sustain its ascent above 1.64 so that's where your resistance is 1.64 and um, medium term support is at 1.00 or 1.0 1 pesos and the major support is at 0 0.77 okay do you plan to trade TKC you don't have you don't have TKC yet in your portfolio but you're planning to trade this stock my advice is monitor this stock near 1.0 near 1.0 okay then if you if you still have TKC if you have had TKC since uh, let's say since January 2019 and you still have this stock well uh, review your trade review your risk tolerance because uh, if you do short-term trading when I do short-term trading I never go beyond 10% risk okay if you apply 10% risk on your short-term trades then and you have and you managed to enter uh, a trade on TKC last January 2019 you should you should have been you should have already sold your TKC last uh, February 13 well uh, if you if if these two conditions are true if you manage to enter a position on TKC last January and if you have a 10% a maximum 10% risk on your short-term trades you should be out of TKC already as early as February 13 and if you still have TKC by now until now then ask yourself ask yourself if you if you are on top of the risk percentage that you can only handle okay so you need to you need to have uh, you need to respect your trailing stop loss okay to protect your gains to preserve your capital and to prevent unbearable losses okay don't rely on pure hope and prayers okay those two things are good but if those are the only things of your are your only basis on whether you will stick to the stock or not then you're, you're just setting yourself up to a more painful than a profitable experience trading the stock market so there you go so you've heard my analysis and overall sentiment for for the top five gainers and top five losers yesterday so again let's have a recap so yesterday uh, today I discussed with you my technical analysis and sentiment for JGS SMC FB Wilkin VMC and also I talked about ISM FNI, ZHI, MB, and TKC. So there you go. This is a dry run of the uh, proposed idea to replace our current setup for short term trading watch list. The, the proposal is to record a video every day, every end of trading for the top five gainers and top five losers so that you will know 
um, my outlook, my overall sentiment for those 10 stocks. Five from the top five gainers, five from the top gainers list, and five from the top losers list. Okay, please give me your feedback. There's a survey posted inside our suggestions and survey section in the private clients forum. Please let me know if you like the like this idea. So it means to say that every day you'll be updated about the top five gainers and top five losers in a video like this. Please give me your feedback if you would like us to pursue this plan or if you would like us to stick with our current setup. Okay. Thank you again. My name is JC De Guzman of Equalist Analytics. Have a good day.